Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Odysseus repairable atomizer, which I received from www.esigs.co.uk. That's e cigz.co.uk. Before I start, though, I must point out I did receive it free of charge for the purpose of conducting a review. My opinion of the product remains true, honest, and accurate as always. Okay, so um, it's going to be a, a fairly long section, the, uh, the close up shots, because uh, so obviously I'm going to be showing you all the parts. I'm going to be showing you how to uh, obviously assemble it all, how to build the coils. I'm also going to sort of cover the liquid control well, very briefly, and also going to show you how to get rid of the uh, quite a common problem with the ceramic. And also I'm going to show you how to adjust the airflow as well. Okay, so here we have all the parts that make up the Odysseus. And uh, obviously in addition to all this lot, you're also going to get a, a small jiffy bag. And in that bag, you're going to find one meter of wick, uh, one meter of no resistance wire, and one meter of resistance wire. And obviously I'm going to sort of cover that later on in the, uh, the video. All the parts are made out of stainless steel, with the exception of obviously uh, things like O-rings, and the actual uh, ceramic there. Uh, you start off then with uh, this sort of uh, base section, uh, which uh, has a 510 connection on it. And I just want you to sort of take note of those two little holes. You've got one on that side. If I spin it 180, then you can see you've got another little hole there. Now, the way that Emeo shows how to sort of assemble this, uh, basically, when I copied his method, I found the drawer to be very tight, and I was quickly realised that uh, these two holes actually sort of play the part with regards to like the, uh, the actual sort of airflow. And so uh, I'll do mine slightly different now so you can actually sort of adjust the airflow. And obviously again, I will show you that later on in the video. Next section is this uh, ceramic part here. And uh, obviously if you compare that to the uh, original IATI, you can see the actual ceramic is uh, probably about sort of three times the size of it. It's a very large ceramic. Uh, now there was a little bit of a problem with this ceramic when I first got it. And I know other people experienced it as well. And that, for whatever reason, it was giving off a, um, a quite a strong sort of soapy taste, which wasn't obviously too pleasant to vape on. Now, uh, I know quite a few guys have the Odysseus, and we was all having a sort of chat for the first sort of couple of nights, trying to work out, you know, how to get rid of it. And uh, you know, we was doing researching and found people saying, "Oh, boil it in milk, soak it in vodka, soak it in bicarbonate of soda," you know. And uh, we was all trying it, and absolutely nothing was working to uh, shift it. Then one guy said, well, I did read a post saying that, you know, if you take the ceramic out, hold it in like a hot blue flame, um, and then basically that gets rid of it. And I was quite sceptical. I didn't fancy sort of doing that. But uh, John, he went ahead and done it, and he said it works, and it worked instantly. So I thought, okay, well, let's give that a go. And uh, basically this is what I'd done. So if you look in the centre there, you can see you've got, say, um, like a thread, uh, not a thread, a slot, and you can put a uh, like a flat-headed screwdriver in there and very carefully just unscrew that and you can pull all this centre post out. You then need to remove the ceramic from this metal housing. And to do that, just hold the metal parts between your finger and thumb. With your other finger and thumb, hold it at the base on uh, each side of the ceramic. And just give it a very gentle wiggle as you're very gently pulling. And it, will ev it, it feels like it's stuck, but it will eventually come out. Now once you've got that ceramic out, what I've done is I've got a length of wire, uh, fed it through the actual sort of centre of it, uh, turned me oven uh, uh, like the burner on full and um, basically just sort of held it in that flame for around sort of 30 seconds just making sure the flame sort of went inside and covered all the outside surface area and then um, once I've done that I then uh, just sort of put it onto some tin foil just to sort of let it cool down now as soon as that um, ceramic touches that flame almost instantly you get a very strong smell of soap and that vanishes after about sort of maybe sort of three or four seconds and um, like I said, once you've done that, you just sort of reassemble it all and it works and it worked instantly. You know, I've not had any sort of slight issues with uh, flavour whatsoever in, uh, since then. And in fact, the flavour on your e-liquid comes out absolutely brilliant now. Obviously, you no, know, so that is uh, quite a big uh, negative. Like I said, I'm not the only one who experienced that. Quite a few people did, but not everyone, though. And um, in an ideal world, you shouldn't have to do that. But, you know, if yours does taste soapy, that for me personally anyway, is the absolute best way to uh, remove that taste. Okay, so moving on then, uh, the next thing you have is this uh, sort of uh, knurled ring, and this basically sort of screws around the, uh, the ceramic part there, and that holds the wick and the wires in place. 
You then have your mouthpiece, and this also acts as the, uh, the liquid control. Now, um, the mouthpiece, um, it is uh, just a mouthpiece on its own. You can't uh, fit a, uh, uh, like a 510 drip tip in there. The hole's too small, unfortunately. Some people have said that they've modified it so you can fit, a, I think it was like an 801 drip tip on there. But you know, to be quite honest, it is a very nice um, mouthpiece anyway. Obviously all the parts are stainless steel, so um, it would be nice if it was a little bit wider that hole there so you could put your own sort of drip tip in, but um, you know, you do get used to it after a while. You then have the, uh, the tank section. Now this is the three mil one, and this is basically called like short mode. And uh, in the future, a larger tank section tank section will be coming out which I think is going to be six mil um, so that might be uh, nice for some people but three mil sort of does me spot on really you then have the uh, the cap and obviously that just screws onto the top of the tank you then have an o-ring which then uh, fits inside there and then finally this slots over your mouthpiece and um, screws onto there and then that holds the uh, the o-ring sort of firmly in place and that stops the uh, the like the mouthpiece or the control uh, the liquid control from sort of like any, having any sort of movement in it, so it holds it all sort of nice and firmly in place, basically. Okay, so that is the parts of the uh, Odysseus. So uh, now what we'll do is uh, go ahead and uh, show you how to assemble it. Okay, so like I said, the uh, in that jiffy bag, you're gonna get two sets of wire. One will be a no resistance wire, and the other one will be a resistance wire. Now, unfortunately, um, it doesn't come marked as to what wire is what. So if you've not got any experience of uh, these sort of like repairable atomizers, you're going to be a little bit flummoxed maybe. But the easiest way, or the only way really, to sort of be able to tell what one is what, is that the uh, no resistance wire will be slightly thicker than the resistance wire. I don't know if the camera can sort of show you the difference there, but this is the uh, no resistance one, and this is the resistance. And hopefully you can see that there is a, this one here is slightly thinner than this one here. Okay, so the way that I uh, make up the Odysseus and make up my coils is uh, slightly different to how um, Emio does his ones in his uh, video. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm sure most people are going to be sort of coming up with their own sort of little variations of how to do it. And you know, if it works for you, then that's the correct way. That's the way that I see it. And uh, so I'm going to show you the way that I sort of um, build my Odysseus and make up my coils. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is take your uh, no resistance wire. And uh, you know, you just want to cut off two lengths that are around sort of, I don't know, I suppose about nine, ten centimeters long, something like that. You probably can go a little bit shorter, but I like to give myself a uh, sort of enough to sort of uh, room to work with. Just some go with that. So you don't need to be sort of too exact with it. Okay, so that's it. I've got two uh, pieces of the uh, no resistance wire. Next thing you need to do is take your resistance wire and cut off a, uh, a section. Now, however long you cut this off at is going to basically affect uh, the resistance of the coil that you make. And also, what else will affect the, um, like the actual resistance will be what sort of gauge wire you are using. Now I normally use uh, this, um, I think it's this one, the 0.16 gauge, which I get from wires.co.uk. And uh, I'm not too sure what this gauge is that actually comes with the, um, the Odysseus, uh, but it does look a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna say it's probably something like maybe sort of 0 0.15, 0 0.14. So uh, normally I would make, cut off a length here, which is about sort of five centimeters long, and that'll give me a resistance of around sort of two, 2.1 ohms. Uh, this stuff, like I said, it looks a little bit thinner, so I'm going to actually make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to make it about sort of three and a half, four centimetres. So, like I said, no, just cut yourself off a uh, little section now. And that's it, I can go on to the uh, next stage now. So now what we have here is the, uh, the two pieces of wire, the longer no resistance and the shorter resistance wire. So you want to make sure that they're running sort of uh, parallel with each other and that they are sort of pretty much completely flush at the end there. Then just make a little V, then using your finger and thumb, just basically just start twisting them together. So it should look something like this. 
Then where the two wires are joined together, just hold that between your finger and thumb and then bend the no resistance wire over the top of them. So basically you're sort of bending it back over itself. And then try and just sort of flatten it out so it's just sort of running a sort of pretty much sort of parallel to the two joined pieces of wire like this. And then again hold it between your finger and thumb and with the other hand just start wrapping it around the two joined pieces of wire. And that's it, that's one end uh, already uh, complete. So now you've just got to repeat the whole process but uh, starting at the other end of the resistance wire. So just take the two wires and uh, just make sure they're running parallel with each other again and that they're completely flush at the top. Then uh, once again just uh, make it into a little sort of a V shape. I suppose it's around sort of five or six millimetres in length that is there. And then just basically join them by twisting together. So it should look something like this. And then once again, just change your sort of a hand position and then take the no resistance wire and bend it back over itself so once again it's running parallel with the two joined wires and just uh, flatten it down again and then uh, just hold it between your finger and thumb right at the end there and then take the no resistance wire and start wrapping it around the two joined wires and uh, that's it it's all done for the next stage we're going to start cutting off a section of the wick now, uh, in Imeo's video, he uses just like one piece of wick. And, you know, that's how I've done it when I first got the Odysseus. And it does work fine. But um, I prefer to do a slightly different method. And uh, that's what I've been doing, you know, ever since I first got it, really. Apart from the, uh, the first time I made one up. And, uh, you know, it works brilliantly for me anyway. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, cut off a uh, one section of wick, probably around sort of, uh, around sort of 10 centimetres long. But then I'm also going to cut off another section, probably around sort of two and a half, three centimetres long. So what you're left with is two pieces of wick, obviously a, a long one and a shorter one. For the next stage, we're going to start wrapping the wire around the two pieces of wick to uh, create the coils. Now I personally advise that you don't use any sort of pin for this like what you would do on something like the uh, the bully atomizer. Uh, the wick is quite thick and it's quite sturdy and I just think it, it makes it a lot easier to use it without the pin and the wire gets a, a better contact around the actual uh, wicker material too. So what I do is I place the shorter piece of wick right in the centre of the longer piece and then take the uh, my wire and place just sort of one end of it so it's actually sort of touching the bottom of the lower piece of longer wick and then hold the three of them together like that. And then from there, I'll just take the coil, or take the wire, and start wrapping some coils around. Now you can just sort of wrap it sort of quite tight. You haven't got to worry about sort of choking it or anything like that. It's, and uh, you know, just sort of try and keep them so they're evenly sort of spaced apart. And it just makes it look a lot neater as well. And then that's it. So what you should have now is your coil all wraps nicely around those two pieces of wick there and it should hopefully look something like that. So once you've wrapped the uh, coils around your piece of wick you then need to just literally drop it into the top of the uh, ceramic like what I've done here and then just uh, hold it in place run the uh, one of the wires down on one side right down the center of the channel there and take your longer piece of wick and just uh, obviously lay it on over the top, like so. Then flip it over and do exactly the same thing on the other side. Just make sure the wire is running right down the centre of that channel there. And take your wick, fold it over and do the same thing there. And then uh, you can just sort of give it a bit of a gentle squeeze just to make sure it's all sitting sort of nice and flush there. And that is how it should look at this stage. Now the next thing I would do is uh, trim up this uh, piece of wick here and literally I'm just going to hold the pair of scissors to the side of the uh, ceramic and cut the wick off so it's running sort of uh, pretty much flush with it. 
like so. And just uh, give it a bit of a tidy up if need be. There you go. And that's what you should be looking at now. Okay, so while still uh, holding everything firmly in place between your finger and thumb, you then want to take the uh, knurled ring and just screw that over the top and just give it a, a few turns just to sort of help you hold everything in place. That should be fine just about there. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the uh, on both sides you've got the wick and the wire, which is uh, running down the uh, the slots there or the channels. And on both sides, the wick is uh, covering the wire, so you can't actually see uh, the wire there. Now uh, on this centre post, you've got a screw which obviously uh, screws up and down, and that small gap in between is we're going to trap one of your wires. So I'm just going to use this one here, just going to sort of hold the uh, the wick and the uh, the wires out of the way there. And I'm going to wrap it around that small gap twice and then tighten it up with the uh, with the nut there. And then just tighten it up. Now you want to make sure you tighten it up pretty tightly as well. And then from there, I don't um, get any scissors out. What I do is I, um, is I literally just grab the wire, put a little bit of tension on it and do slow circles and it eventually snaps off completely and utterly clean, so you've got nothing hanging out there whatsoever. And then just again, make sure the wick is uh, covering up uh, the wire in that slot now. Now obviously on this side, you still have this uh, sort of loose wire hanging out, sort of doing nothing, but don't worry about that, because uh, that's all gonna get sort of sorted out pretty, uh, pretty sharpish. Uh, so for the uh, next stage, what you wanna do is trim off these pieces of wick and the wick should be trimmed off so it's all sort of, uh, pretty much flush with the end of this uh, o-ring now. So I'm just going to uh, take my uh, scissors and uh, place it so it's resting against the o-ring and then just uh, trim it off. And spin it over and do the same thing. Okay, so hopefully now, as you can see, the uh, wick is all nice and uh, neatly trimmed up. For the next stage, we're going to be inserting the ceramic into this uh, base part here, which has the 510 connection. Now, on Imeo's video, he uh, screws the base part onto his uh, device and uh, screws the ceramic in, uh, and then he keeps on screwing it in until he feels this center post make contact with the uh, like the center post on the uh, device that he's using. And then he sort of gives it another half turn, I think it is, and he sort of uh, pushes it in a little bit to compensate for the O-ring and it gives it another half turn to make a really nice sort of uh, tight connection. But I found that when I've done that, it created a, a very tight draw. And this is why I was referring to those uh, two small uh, holes here in the actual 510 thread. Because if I demonstrate, once it's sort of screwed sort of fully on, then you haven't got hardly any gap there at all. It may sort of obviously vary from device to device, but definitely on my, uh, the ones that I've used, it creates a, um, hardly any airflow at all. So rather than sort of screwing it onto the, the uh, device, I know that if I screw the uh, ceramic in until this centre post is sticking out by about sort of one millimetre, then that gives me like pretty much a perfect draw. So you can uh, obviously experiment with that and uh, ju adjust it to find the uh, airflow that you like really. Okay, so what we're going to do then is obviously uh, just screw this into the uh, base part. So you've just got to make sure that these uh, two pieces of wick are sort of nicely sort of tucked in and then literally just sort of uh, start screwing it in. And like I said, I'm just going to keep on screwing this in until eventually um, like I can see about one millimetre worth of that sort of centre post sticking out. Don't worry about this wire, you can just sort of push it up there and keep it out of the way. And so hopefully you can see now, it's just sort of uh, sticking out. Literally, it's only by about a millimetre, but that still gives me a, like, a really like really nice strong connection when I sort of screw it onto my Provary but it also allows me that little bit extra uh, sort of airflow so I get a really nicer draw. 
So I'm going to leave it about there. And then from here, you want to make sure that this wire is sort of again running down like the center there of that sort of slot. And then you take the knurled ring and then you just literally sort of screw it down. And you need to sort of screw it fairly tight so it traps that wire. And this also sort of prevents this section from sort of moving up and down. So that wire is now trapped between those two parts. And then again, rather than using a pair of scissors to cut it off, I'll just put a bit of tension on it, do it in small circles, and it snaps off, completely nutty flush, you've got nothing sort of sticking out there whatsoever that could cause you any sort of problems. Okay, so your coils all made up and looking uh, nice and neat, hopefully. Your wick's all in the right place, your wires are in the right place, and everything's all uh, screwed up nice and tight. So what you want to do now then is uh, put it onto your device and just check to make sure that the uh, coil is going to sort of fire up nicely. So I'm using my uh, Provary here, so I'm literally just going to sort of uh, screw it in. And uh, you know it gives you a really nice, really nice solid uh, connection there. There's no sort of movement or rocking at all, very nice connection. Okay, so now before you fire it up, very important, you want to make sure you add loads of juice to this uh, coil here. Now I'll probably add a bit more juice um, to the coil than what maybe other people do and I will explain my reasons for that uh, later on. But I'm just going to make sure that the uh, coil's nice and wet. I'm just using some apple tobacco here which I imagine is like a, an apple tobacco flavour. I've never had it before so I'm uh, quite looking forward to trying it. So I'm just going to put loads of juice along the top there. And also down the side channels here on top of the wick. And on the other side. And now hopefully when I fire this up, we should see some vapour. There we do, that's good. Okay, so from here, I'm going to, because I'm uh, fortunate enough to have a Provary, I'm also going to check the uh, to see what sort of resistance I've got. Now normally if I make up the coil exactly like I've shown you so far, but using that, uh, where is it, the uh, 0.16 gauge wire that I normally get, I normally get a coil of around sort of 2, 2.2 ohms, something like that. But I've got a feeling that this one's probably going to be coming out a little bit uh, higher than that, probably around sort of 3 ohms, something. And it's saying, uh, or 2.9 ohms, so I'm not too far out. But uh, so that's quite a high-ish resistance if you've only got like a, as like you know, like a, a standard sort of uh, voltage device, but. Well, I'm fortunate enough to have a Provary, I can just sort of make the old voltage up a bit. I'll put it out to uh, probably about sort of, I don't know, 4.5. And that should give me a, uh, a pretty tasty vape. And hopefully you'll see a little bit more vapour now when I press it. That's a bit more like it. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit more juice again. So um, like I said, I will explain my reasons for that as we progress. Well, it smells nice. Right, okay, so for the uh, next stage then, what you need to do is add on the uh, mouthpiece, uh, which is also your liquid control, and that literally just sort of uh, screws over the top. Hopefully, if you line it up. That's it. Now, I'll just screw it down. I don't do it tight. I literally just do it as soon as it starts biting. That's it. It's, it's all done. Okay, so while I'm here, I'm just going to quickly explain how the liquid control works. So let's say, for example, you know, you feel as though your atomizer is starting to run dry a little bit, even though you know you've got like a, you know, plenty of juice left in the tank. What you do is just literally unscrew it to expose some of the, uh, the wick. Obviously, you can see that on that side. And if I spin it over, you'll be able to see the wick on the other side. That will then also allow juice to sort of soak into there and go up to the uh, heating coil. And then, for example, if you feel as though it's starting to flood, then you can uh, obviously just uh, close it off to uh, prevent any more juice uh, going up to the heating coal. So that is uh, basically how it works. Right, so now we know that the coil is all uh, firing up nicely, we can uh, progress and start assembling the tank section. So you've just got to literally take the, uh, the tank part, fit it over the top, and then uh, just screw it into place. And obviously, you know, you want to screw it out so it's uh, nice and tight there. So the next stage is to obviously uh, fill the tank up with your chosen e-liquid. 
And the, uh, the best way to do this is to hold it at a bit of an angle, place the uh, nozzle against the, uh, the edge there, and just squeeze and keep on doing so until we can see the liquid sort of coming up the other side. It's a bit off for me to actually see there, but I think that's enough there. Add a bit more actually. That's it. Okay, so the tank is now filled up with around sort of three millilitres of e liquid. Then for the next stage, we're going to take this uh, top cap and that just slides straight over the top and then screws onto the tank. Then you're going to take the o-ring, slide that over the mouthpiece, push it all the way down so it's completely sort of flush there. Then you just take this little top cap, put it over, and then what I do is I screw it down a little bit just to make sure it's going to line up that o-ring. Just unscrew it again just to make sure I think it's looking okay. And then once again just uh, screw it in. Look at it, that's it and then give it a really nice good tight there. Tighten, should I say. Okay, so that is the uh, Odysseus, all uh, fully loaded up with e-liquid, and uh, ready to have a nice vape. So I'm gonna whack that on the old uh, Proveri, and then uh, go into the, uh, the vaping stage. Okay, so that is the Odysseus Repairable Atomizer. Now I'm sure some people are going to be looking at that and thinking, oh, it looks too long-winded or too much hassle. But you have to bear in mind that I'm doing it sort of looking at a monitor over there. I mean, I'm doing it also back to front with my hands sort of pretty much facing away from me. So it's almost like doing it blindfolded. So when I'm not actually doing it in front of a camera, you know, I can make up uh, well, the whole thing from start to finish in probably less than like a couple of minutes, really. It really is actually sort of pretty straightforward once you've sort of done it a few times to get a bit of practice. Um, now I've got the uh, tank already filled up with some of that apple tobacco flavour and um, so far I have actually been vaping it for about sort of 5 or 10 minutes prior to recording this section, just sort of having a break basically, and I've still not opened up the liquid control yet. Now in that close up shot, so I was saying about I really like to sort of load up loads of juice onto that wick, let it really soak in and add a little bit extra onto there. And then basically what I do is I just keep that con uh, the liquid control fully closed uh, for probably about sort of 10-15 minutes and then as soon as I notice a slight difference in the uh, flavour of the, uh, the vapour then uh, that's when I open it up but literally all I'm doing is pretty much one full turn and, um, and that's it you know so I literally I'm just opening it up by top about one millimetre maybe something like that and then I don't have to touch that liquid control uh, basically until like, the tank's completely and bone dry. Uh, don't have any wicking problems or anything like that at all. Obviously that's just for, based on my own sort of personal experience with it like the factors may sort of um, you know, change that experience for you. For example, you may be vaping at high voltages, you may be using very thick VG liquids, and all those sort of factors could uh, play, a, play a big part in it. But for me, with what I use, you know, just soak up that coil, vape it with it fully closed. As soon as you notice a slight difference, just give it one full turn of the liquid control, and that's it, you ain't got to touch it again till, uh, till the end. Okay, so I'm going to stop rabbiting and give you a, a quick blast on it. As you can see, like, vapor-wise, it produces a really nice amount of vapor. Now, normally, uh, when I do my coils, I normally get it so it's around sort of 2, 2.1 ohms using that uh, 0.16 stuff. But obviously, for the review, I wanted to use the, uh, the wire that actually comes with it. And so I've got quite a higher resistance uh, coil on there, so that's why I've pumped up the voltage to uh, 4.5 volts. But the way I normally do it with my sort of 2 ohm uh, coil, I normally actually vape it around sort of 3.4 volts and uh, it's just a really nice uh, vape. So you can use the Odysseus on just like a regular sort of, uh, like your GGTS for example, which has just got like the standard battery voltage in there, and you're still gonna get like a really nice uh, vaping experience out of it. Uh, 
Uh, flow hit wise, I'm just going to open this up that one turn now. Just feel it's just starting to go, and that's it. I'm just going to leave it like that now. <coughs> uh, flow hit wise, now when I first got this, I found the flow hit to be incredibly strong. I like a nice strong flow hit, but I was really struggling to take. You know, I like taking long inhales. And I was struggling to take any sort of length of inhale because the throat here was just sort of blowing the back of my head off, or the back of my throat off. And um, I couldn't work out why that was happening because I was using the same liquid, the same wick, the same coil setup, the same resistance, etc., etc., as the IAT. And um, but for whatever reason, one was giving me like an almighty throat hit, and the other one was just giving me like a nice, decent throat hit. And then I realised it's obviously something to do with like the. Uh, the airflow, and I noticed that on the IAT, that little centre pin comes out by about a millimetre. And so like, I matched it up uh, when I made up my next Odysseus, made sure that little pin, centre pin was hanging out a millimetre. And now the um, it's basically like the drawer is exactly the same as what I find on my IAT. So, it's, um, you know, so you can obviously adjust the airflow like that, which makes it a lot nicer. And that extra airflow just uh, obviously cools the vapour down that little touch, and uh, so it makes the throat hit not quite so violent, basically. Flavour of the e-liquids come out fantastic. Like uh, I've been using, uh, like obviously like my regular sort of tobaccos and my menthols. I've also been vaping some cookie dough flavour recently. Um, what else was there? A cherry pipe, a, uh, a licorice tobacco, and they've all been coming out. You know, you can really sort of taste plenty of flavour there. Apart from the first two days I had it and the flavour was awful. Like I said, uh, no, we narrowed it down to that ceramic being like the cause of the problem. And he's just getting, he was getting loads of flavour, but he's also getting loads of soap mixed in with it, which, as you can imagine, wasn't the most sort of pleasant experience to vape on. But as soon as I sort of put that um, ceramic into the flame and uh, then reassembled it in the Odysseus, you know, the flavours have just been absolutely fantastic since then. So it is a, for me, it is quite a big negative that I had to do that with the ceramic. You know, ideally, you, know, you shouldn't have to do that in an ideal world, but... Uh, Regardless, you know, it does work. It got rid of that flavour, and since then, I couldn't be more happy with the flavour production. Now, I was a really big fan of the um, original IAT. And at the time when I, you know, I knew the Odysseus was sort of uh, coming out, I just thought, well, I'm sure I'm going to like it, but I couldn't see anything really replacing the eye at it, you know, and um, it really did impress me, that product. And the only thing I really didn't like about it was that it was slightly too long for my liking, which, uh, you know, it's a bit silly because obviously it was longer because it held more juicy and got to fill it up quite as often. But I did much prefer the look of the Odysseus. And now when I first got it and I had that sort of soapy taste and that, I know, to be quite honest, I just wanted to stop vaping it and I wanted to reach out for my IATI. But as soon as I sorted out the soapy taste, I mean, like, now for me, there's no going back to the original IATI now. It'll be a nice little sort of back, uh, backup. But the uh, Familia Odysseus is just a far superior product. It's just, uh, it's got a lovely weight to it. You know, it really does change the weight and feel of your, your whatever mod you're using it on, basically. Um, it's obviously, it's all metal now, apart from obviously like things like O-rings. So it's going to be a lot tougher than the uh, original IATI. And uh, you know, it's just uh, it just looks nicer. It just I think it actually vapes nice as well. I've never had any sort of dry hits whatsoever. I've never even had a, a semi dry hit out of it. I've never had uh, any sort of floods out of it. You know, it just uh, it just works perfectly. You know, and like I said, the most I have to do is unscrew the uh, liquid control like a full turn, and that's it. You know, I can just vape it until that tank's completely and utterly bone dry. So for me, you know, this is uh, an absolutely sort of perfect vape uh, for me personally. So in summary, like for me, I think it's an absolutely fantastic product. I think it has definitely beaten the original IAT, which again I thought was like another fantastic rebuilder or atomizer. The only negative I've got to say about it was that soapy taste. And uh, you know, hopefully, obviously this is like the first run of these Odysseus, so hopefully 
the next run they, they're going to sort of realise whether was causing that um, sort of soapy taste, whether it's a cleaning product or what, I'm not too sure. But um, hopefully they'll get that sorted out for the next lot. You know, and then, but that is literally my only negative, and like I said, you know, it was a pretty simple fix in the end. So uh, hopefully that vid this video will help people get rid of that soapy taste as well. Uh, but apart from that, though, like uh, I think it's uh, an absolutely uh, it's a it's a brilliant rebuildable atomizer, basically. Okay, so there's not a great deal else I can really sort of tell you about it. So you know, if you fancy trying one out for yourself, go along to www.e6.co.uk. That's e-cigz.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com. That's e-sig-reviews.com. Cheers guys, happy vaping. See you later.